Hey folks, in this interview, I'm chatting with Curtis Jones about traveling the world and taking photos. This is Twitter. Hey, welcome back to This Week in Photo. I'm your host, Frederick Van Johnson. Today on the show, I have the pleasure of sitting down with Mr. Curtis Jones. He's a world traveler uh, and a guy who beats the heck out of his gear because he uses his gear. Imagine that. <laughs> so we're, we're going to be talking about some of the cool places that he's gone and how he prepared for those, those trips and some of the adventures and tips that he's learned while on these adventures. Curtis, welcome to the show, man. How you doing? I'm great. How are you? I'm doing good. I am doing good. I've been I've been looking forward to this interview. We've been trying to get this done for what six months, something like that. Yeah, it seems like that. I I was thinking about because uh, we were going to do this before I went to Antarctica, uh, or just after. I can't remember. And just before we started this, I wrote down a bunch of places that I've kind of gone yeah. since then. Uh, yeah, it's been a been a bit of a spell. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, now we're doing it now. So it's all good. This is good. So uh, let, let's start there. So the, when last we spoke, you were you were like, I think you were like a couple days away from heading out to Antarctica. Right? Yeah, that's right. Yes. OK. So so you were in the preparation phase and all that. And well, so take us back there again, like the before you went, because I'm curious about. Did it go as expected? Did you bring everything you needed? You know, my biggest fear is if I go on something like that, oh, man, I forgot my charger or, you know, something like that. What did it go as expected? Your loadout, you know, the 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 bracing for reality versus the actual reality. Uh, well, yeah, I mean, it kind of it kind of always does, because I always expect it to not go completely right. <laughs> yeah. So in, in that sense, yeah, it, it went exactly as I thought. But there's always a couple things you kind of forget. For the most part, though, that was um, that's the second season I've been down there, and I think like the fourth or fifth trip. So uh, I kind of for that that kind of trip to Antarctica, I've kind of got most of the uh, the uh, things the the hiccups. You, you, got all, you got all the bugs worked out, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. For the most part. But I mean, you do, you do, you forget things like chargers or earbuds or, and it's always like the silliest things, uh, you know, like a belt. Actually I did, I forgot my belt. I didn't, technically I didn't forget a belt. This has nothing to do with photography, but it, I did, uh, lose my belt, um, on the way down in a hotel. Uh, so that's easily was, solved though. You just go get some rope or something and you're good to go. Right? Yeah. Well, that's exactly what I did. Did you really? <laughs> because, <laughs> because I always travel, I always travel with rope. I, it's kind of always in the bag. So, well, what's in your bag? So when you when you go on an adventure like this, like if you go, if you know, if, if people are traveling, you know, close to their local home or you know, or to like even if you go on some adventure like to the Grand Canyon or something, there's a hotel. There's typically going to be, uh, you know, grocery stores and a and a Best Buy or something. Or if you forget something, you just run over there and get it, right? But if you're out on the frozen tundra. You don't really have those options. So, what? How do how do you prepare? Like even having been there multiple times, how do you know what to bring? And then if something fails, what are the contingencies? And but you still have to pack light. How how does that work? You do. You pack. Actually, the that is the answer. You pack light. Uh, so I find I I particularly make a lot of uh, mistakes in packing when I overpack. So if I have a short list. Uh, of the necessities, and I make sure those things are in my bag. Uh, it usually doesn't become a problem. Now, uh, that also means you're wearing kind of the same stuff a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, but you know that 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 helps me. You have like, you know, the 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 primary sort of jacket and pants system, and boots and gloves and hat and stuff like that. If you bring four or five options, the chances are you're going to misplace things and lose things and whatever. So well, how do you um, keep it clean though? I mean, do you, and oh, especially so, when you're running around like that, how do you, how do you, or do you just marinate in your own juices? <laughs> <laughs> to each their own, I suppose. <laughs> but, uh, uh, yeah, we've all got our own flavor, our own brand down there. <laughs> yeah. <in Aruba. laughs> uh, but, uh, actually there, there is, uh, there are laundry services on these, on most of these ships and boats and stuff that we're on down okay. there. So yeah, it, it's not, it's not so bad. If you choose to go like old school, 1887, uh, you can, yeah. uh, but you'll, uh, you'll have less success getting someone to share coffee with you in the morning. Yeah. You don't, you want to, you don't want to go Lewis and Clark style, right? <laughs> <Out there. No. laughs> 
Yeah, I just like the vision I had when you told me you were going. I had this vision of this a dog sled with a bunch of huskies pulling you around, you know, with some camera gear on there, and you just taking amazing photos. <laughs> that, that's the that's the that, vision I get. I have a feeling the reality was a little bit more, you know, it's, modern. It's than a that. little. <laughs> it's a little more modern. It's getting more and more modern every year. Uh, I mean, this year we had uh, we actually had Wi-Fi uh, wow. most most days. Uh, that was new. So it's, it's definitely changing. Things are changing down there um, with increased interest in tourism and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, but I mean, to be perfectly honest with you, I would love it if it was, you know, uh, on the trail dog teams and uh, you just set off, which which can be done. Actually, you can't have dogs in Antarctica anymore. It's just not a thing that's allowed. But uh, my trip right after that, when I went up to the Arctic, right after the Antarctic, um, there were more sort of like uh, dog teams and sleds and yeah. skiing and such. So you, you, you remember that movie, uh, geez, I think it was Billy Crystal was in it. It was called city slickers. Oh yeah. You remember that one? And it was the city guy that's out in the middle of nowhere with sort of the rustic cowboy guy and they're sitting around fires eating beans. And you know, that that's kind of what I feel like you were doing. Was it not like that? Was it not, or was it, was it? Yeah, no, it's kind of, it's a little bit of that for sure. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's adventure tourism, but it's kind of soft adventure. So, uh, it doesn't, uh, if everybody's doing their job and, and the, the, the crew, the people that we go with, they're fantastic at like putting out all the fires become, before they become fires. Yeah. Uh, so if you're, if you're a client or, or a customer, it really does feel like that experience, kind of the city slicker experience. If you're behind the scenes, behind the curtain, uh, you do see where things kind of like, you know, potentially could be a little bit more uh, treacherous or whatever, but uh, everybody's like, they're such, such professionals and they've been doing this for so long that things run pretty smoothly. Well, tell me, tell me about the photography side of it. So you're, you're out there, you know, aside from the preparation, you've got everything sort of dialed in, you know, you, you got your stuff and now it's the, the main reason or one of the main reasons for being out there is to make great images. Yeah. What, what were you successful? Did you get what you wanted? I think so. The first time I went down, I, I, I don't know. And I think we may have talked about this before, but I specifically, uh, made a point of not looking at other people's work mm -hmm. in the months leading up because I kind of wanted to see the place with fresh eyes and experience it that way. And this time I, you know, obviously I had seen most of it before cause I had been there. Uh, so I was really trying to, uh, do it a little differently, uh, let it sink in a little bit deeper. I, I mean, the benefit is that a lot of the pressure is off to, capture these what you feel are once in a lifetime images. Mm -hmm. uh, so because it's like the second or third time, um, which, you know, I'm incredibly grateful for. But yeah, I, it's there's still a lot of pressure. These are like big days. You're down there specifically to create images for uh, the, the clients, for uh, the, the people on the boat themselves, mm -hmm. for yourself, uh, for the company that's bringing me down there. Uh, a lot of times. And you're also a, a big part of this is um, your teaching. So there's a lot of photo education that's going on at the same time. So other photographers have come to experience Antarctica uh, and have you sort of uh, lead them through that, through a wildlife shot, a whale, a, a penguin or uh, a Zodiac cruise uh, with, you know, icebergs and things like that and uh, calving glaciers and such, yeah, that's so. so cool. That is so cool. So as as the as the instructor, do you, do you find that you're able to capture images that you wanted to capture while you're down there? Because it feels like, you know, you're not going to be able to do this. It's a it's a not a once in a lifetime, obviously, adventure, but it's not a frequent occurrence that you get down there to do that. And I, I no. feel like, you know, there's this amazing sunset or pieces of that glacier are breaking off and I can't take photos of it because I'm telling someone about F stops and shutter speeds and all that. Was it, was it like that? Or were you able to get the shots that you personally wanted, you know, while also helping the students? Yeah, that's, that's a tough one. It, it, you're really at the mercy of, of the environment and the conditions as well. So you can have like a lot of plans, a lot of shots that are like on your schedule, what you want to get, what you want to hit, uh, especially having gone there a second time and wind and weather might blow you down a different channel. Like, mm -hmm. so we had not physically blow us, but we might have to take a different path. So I never get back. You know, there are a couple places there that I shot the first time around. I was really hoping for better light, uh, getting out there in different conditions and we had to take a different route this time. So yeah, there's a chance that I'll never see those mountains or those, uh, you know, uh, glacier faces again ever in my life. So yeah, there is definitely some of that pressure. 
uh, especially when you see what's down there. But then there's also uh, there's so much incredible uh, photo subjects down there that that feeling doesn't last long. I mean, you, you're basically just like every it's not even like every morning is Christmas. Every time you step outside and turn right or left, it's like presence. Yeah. So, yeah. That sounds amazing. I, if, if you can let go of that idea of like having to get, you know, the, the boxes checked or whatever, mm -hmm. uh, I feel like everybody comes back with, uh, images, maybe not images that they thought they might get, but like images that they're very happy with and surprised by. Yeah. Do you, do you go down there? Like you said, do you take a list of, of, shots that you want to get that, you know, I'm, I'm a failure if I don't come back with these five shots. <laughs> you have that? <laughs> yeah, I have, the, I have a t-shirt actually. I wear it. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm a <laughs> failure. <laughs> <laughs> Next year, I'm going to take it up a notch. I'm going to get a tattoo in memento style. Five <laughs> yeah, shots. I dare five you. Shots I'd pay failure. money for that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> I am pre pretty bad for dares. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I I did this year. I had a few different shots in mind uh, that I wanted to I wanted to get, uh, and I didn't get everything, but I got versions of what I was hoping to get. It is nice to go in. So the first time, like, like having a very open mind and a clean palette, and just let the place kind of fall on you, uh, and going back a second time and knowing a little more about where light is going to be and how the biggest one is like animal behavior. So I found the biggest difference this year in particular it was with uh, the whales and uh, watching the whale behavior and when they're going to like, you know, bring their tails up and, and stuff like that. So watching for that, talking with like the Zodiac drivers, getting us in a position so that the whale comes up, the, the tail will come up like where the light is coming uh, across, you know, the ocean with this perfect peak or whatever in the background, that kind <sighs> of stuff. Those are the sorts of things that were, I was like on my wish list, you know, fingers crossed. And, uh, yeah. And we, you know, we got lucky we had one evening that was like five, six hours of just gorgeous light. Those bladder buster evenings where like, you don't go back to the boat. You just stay out oh, yeah. little Zodiacs and just shoot, shoot, shoot. Cause it, the light just gets better and better and better and better. What was the weather like there? Like, you know, when you say bladder buster, I'm thinking, well, yeah, maybe you can't just go find a tree, you know, <laughs> not even allowed. Yeah. Yeah. The, yeah. uh, the rules, the international, uh, rules that govern that place, uh, say that you can't do that sort of stuff. Oh, often. really? Oh, yeah, wow. So, okay. Yeah, that's one of the, the unique features that if you're out in a boat or if you're over on the land visiting a penguin colony or something like that, you have to get taken back to, to, the, to the ship. Sometimes it's like a 10 minute ride, sometimes it's 20. So, um, and Time people, it right and drink, yeah. don't drink a lot, right? Don't drink a lot. You can't bring food or anything like that over either. So, wow. Yeah. Wow. Well, what kind of, what, what kind of gear did you bring out there with you? I, you know, you mentioned packing light, but when I, when I go on something, especially if I was to go on one of these adventures, it, you know, it'd be like, well, I don't, I don't, I, I want to make sure I have every contingency covered. So I need these four lenses. I need, well, I got to bring multiple bodies. Cause if one fails, I don't want to yeah. be that guy without a camera. So let me have a backup body, multiple yeah. batteries, chargers. And wow, the drone shots out there must be amazing. Now I got to bring my drone kit. Like, what, what do you bring? What do you recommend that your, that your students bring along with them? Definitely bring like a big, so if, if someone's only bringing a couple of lenses, it's got to be big and, uh, and a wide, uh, and you can cover a lot of ground that way. Uh, if you're more of a serious hobbyist or professional, you're definitely going to want to bring the, the best glass you have. Uh, I, I do try to pack light. I pack light on everything except probably my gear. Mm -hmm. That's where I, you know, I, if you're going to go down for six weeks or something like that, you have to have two bodies. You have to have uh, enough batteries and, and, uh, cards. Now you do, because you're kind of staying on a boat, you get the opportunity to dump cards back up to the hard drives and recharge batteries and stuff. So it's a little different in that sense that you don't, I've been on trips for like 45 days where you just have the memory cards you have and the, you know, you use solar panel to, you know, uh, recharge your batteries or whatever. And that's just the way it is. But on these trips, Typically, there's two bodies in there, two, like a 70 to 200, a 1 to 400 uh, a converter of some sort, like a 1.4, mm -hmm. um, a wide. I have a 16 to 35 that I've just driven into the ground and snow. Like, it's been it's been with me everywhere, and it's literally – I was showing it to a student a couple nights ago. I did an astro workshop, and uh, I was showing her my 16 to 35, and it's just got, like, Gorilla Glue all around the front holding it together. It's completely Frankenstein. 
But see, that's um, that's a that's a rite of passage right there. You can oh, you can yeah. always you can always tell uh, you know I don't want to say a real photographer, but you can tell you can tell a working photographer by how new their gear looks, right? And uh, because you you're taking your gear literally to some of the harshest conditions, beating it up, and it's all about the image, not so much the fancy gear and keeping it pristine looking for the next owner, right? Yeah, my my gear looks like me after one of these trips. So, <laughs> <that's>, <laughs> and I've been refused hugs at airports by loved ones after like being oh, God. <laughs> like who is this guy? <laughs> yeah. So that's that's how my gear looks and I expect it to keep up with me that way so yeah. it gets trashed. But. Well, how how talk to me a little bit about the uh, the camaraderie and the friendships because it seems like when you're when you're in these kind of adventures and you know with a with a small group of people that are experiencing things for the first time, you build up a certain camaraderie and, you know, and kinship. Did you, did you feel that happened on this adventure? Yeah, totally. And every, every trip is different. Uh, Antarctica had its own sort of vibe. Uh, and it was different than last year in Antarctica. Mongolia was different again. We're going to Greenland on Sunday morning. I leave, I go to Greenland and that'll have its own little different energy, but you definitely build a camaraderie and sort of like this unique, uh, bond with the people that you're with because you're all going through these amazing and they literally are like for some people life-changing experiences and I don't mean it like as a throwaway uh, phrase you know in a cliche way but like just these really majestic sort of awestruck moments and uh, and you don't pack it in and go your separate ways and connect on Facebook afterwards you go back you sit you eat together you, you know, you, you have like a nightcap together, you listen to some music, you, uh, you know, you see them the next morning for breakfast, you repeat it all over again for days and days and days. So, yeah, I mean, it's, it's one of the few events in my world anyways, where I get to form real friendships and, and sort of a closeness with complete strangers. And within yeah. like a week to 10 days, we've become actual friends and not just acquaintances online or whatever, which is a, is a lot of the, the rest of my world, I guess. And maybe for a lot of people too. Yeah. No, so I like I like that it gives us that little break from reality. I love that. I love that. All right, Curtis. So this this sounds like uh, the adventure of a lifetime, right? So people listening to this will be like, "Yeah, I want to go there. I want to go to Antarctica. I want to go to the Arctic and and experience." this stuff before it goes away permanently. If they want to do this, if they want to head out on an adventure like this or, you know, to other sort of exotic places, what are some tips and tricks for them to do so? And then also if they want to join you on one of your upcoming workshops, what's what, how do they, how do they do that? Uh, I would say that the easiest way to get started, if you want to do something like this is be like, honestly gauge where your, uh, your, uh, relative experience lies. So if you're really comfortable with this kind of travel, you know, exotic places and, and, uh, remote locations where some of the niceties, uh, you know, reliable internet and cell service and, uh, <laughs> hot water, <laughs> you know, <laughs> toilets, uh, veg vegetarian meals. Like you're not always going to get all of those things in, in, in a lot of these places. But, uh, if you want to work your way up to that, I, I would suggest just picking doable adventures that are a little closer to home mm -hmm. and, and try that first, but treat them as if they are more expedition style. So when I was preparing, you know, years ago before when I was getting ready to do a lot of these trips and I had a lot less experience, I would often still, you know, make the lists up, uh, pack my bag the same way as if I was going somewhere where I would be not a hundred percent, but almost completely reliable, self-reliant, um, pack your camera bag that way. You know, uh, Google is obviously amazing. I, I, I Google image search a lot of these locations. Oh, yeah. If I'm, especially if I'm going to teach and I haven't been there, I try to go, I try to get everywhere myself first that I bring other people to run workshops every once in a while there's like a location that I just may not. So that's where like the, the image search and stuff like that will come in using apps uh, to, to figure out where the sun's going to be, where the Milky Way is going to be like that kind of stuff. And just planning out, blocking out potential photographs uh, and uh, how you want to like split your time up. So you don't just show up at a location and spend all your you know time milling about looking for X, Y, and Z. Yeah. So that's, that stuff's super useful. And, it seems really overwhelming, but if you, if you really just make it about a weekend trip, that's, you know, four hours down the road from your house in some state park or something like that, it's the exact same idea. 
Mm. Uh, so it's a really good space to make a bunch of mistakes and, oh, I forgot, you know, a bad extra battery or I forgot this lens or I forgot my sleeping bag or whatever, you know? Um, yeah, a couple of those. And then you, you work your way up to bigger and bigger trips. And if you really want it to, uh, get a taste for what it's like, then I would suggest going with, uh, you know, an outfitting guide or a company that offers for specific workshops and things, locations, uh, a lot of times you can just go with a company that uh, offers a tour and do your own photo thing, but they're not going to be as um, accommodating. It's not going to be as, yeah, as exactly uh, accommodating to like sunrise, sunset, and uh, you know night sky stuff. So if you really want to do it right, then I would suggest if you if you if you don't feel like you have the ability right now to do it by yourself, is to go with a photo tour. Yeah. Um, and then there's your that. photo tour, right? So how do, if they want yeah, to join so you, how do, how do they do that? There's a, I work for a couple different companies and then I have my own as well. So my company, uh, is called newfound shores. And so our, our tours and things like that are all listed on our website. And, uh, then there's another company that I do. Uh, I just went to Mongolia with, and I'll be going to Greenland with in uh, a few days and they're offbeat. Um, and then the Antarctica stuff is all through a company called One Ocean Expeditions. Now, those are the three that I specifically deal with, and I trust all of these guys and girls. Uh, I've done multiple trips with all of them mm -hmm. as, a, as a guide and as a teacher, and, uh, and for my own uh, stuff as well. Uh, I know that I've vetted like, all the locations, and I've built all these workshops from scratch. And uh, so I'm quite confident in recommending all of those. Yeah. Uh, but there, there are obviously other options. There are multiple uh, versions of those same, um, sort of scenarios. Love it. Love it. Yeah. All right. I got to put you on the hot seat before we, before we close this off. Are you ready for this? Let's do it. All right. So you and I have a mutual friend, <laughs> so, Renee Robin, right? We both know Renee Robin. Uh, so the, uh, the, the hot seat question is there is this photo series that she worked on that I know you're familiar with that she put together. <laughs> <laughs> and this, this <laughs> I see you getting nervous now. Like, <laughs> uh, I'm, just, I'm just adjusting myself for the barrage. Just hold on, hold on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here it comes. And I'll, I'll, you know, this is sort of foreshadowing in this interview because at the beginning you mentioned that you forgot your belt on this last adventure, but you always carry rope with you. <laughs> so, <laughs> right, yeah, uh, yeah. So, <laughs> so tell me about the, the the this thing that you and Renee collaborated on. She's going to come on in, in a couple of weeks and she's going to talk about it. So I'm giving you a chance to talk about it first. So what oh, what was this project? Mm. Uh, <laughs> So yeah, <laughs> she's, she, Renee's had, uh, uh, this idea for a while, as far as I can tell this, uh, this rope tying shibari series. Um, she's also been shooting underwater mermaid type stuff for a while. Uh, the combination, I guess, just came to a head, uh, right time, right place. I ha we happened to be in the same place at the same time. And I was giving her a hand with, you know, several different shoots that involve this stuff. Yeah. Uh, I've got, a, you know, a, a pretty strong background in, in climbing and, and rope work and things like that. But this is a, you know, a completely different set of it's rules. A little different. A little so bit. Yeah. I, I was willing to like step back and just learn what I could learn about the whole thing. Uh, but that said, uh, I did find myself, uh, when the opportunity came up, when they, when they were, there was a bit of downtime, there was a lull yeah. between like actual subjects to, uh, yeah. To, to throw in. Yeah, and, uh, I saw I saw a glimpse of a photo. <laughs> so just for folks that don't know, shibari is just like it's an art form of of rope tying and binding people, I guess, together and sort of artistically and and it, it's very beautiful. And Renee, like you know, like Curtis was saying, well, Renee, it can be, and then sometimes it's me. So is that, well, no, I I would argue that no, it came out really good. I think it was really really good. Um, but we won't. We, I'll leave it to you to post that. We won't post that. <laughs> but that was yeah. Yeah, that was a she good job. A big reveal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I ended up, I ended up in rope. I ended up in a mermaid tail. I think I had a unicorn horn on at one point. I don't know. <laughs> I, I start to lose consciousness. I was upside down for quite a while. You're like, is is are there supposed to be stars on, everywhere? I don't understand this. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Why am I like five different shades of blue right now? Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, no. They the 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 guys and girls that do that are 
seriously uh, talented and hardcore. Yeah, I was, you know, I, I really appreciated the opportunity, but that's, it's, uh, it's not easy. That's, that's a tough, tough go as a model, I'm sure. Yeah, no, no, for sure. For sure. Well, cool, man. Well, let's wrap this up. Uh, what are your, uh, what's coming up next for you? What's, uh, what's on your radar? Next is literally after we end this, I pack, I'm going to start packing a bag for Greenland. I go there for three weeks. We're going to teach a photo workshop uh, for, uh, uh, I think it's like 11 days, something like that. Mm -hmm. Uh, And then uh, two uh, buddies of mine. So the three of us, we're going to go up onto the ice cap and do a little camping and shooting of our own, do a little adventure, just the three of us. Um, And uh, then I come back to Canada uh, and I have some work in the West again, in Alberta, some speaking engagements, but mostly getting ready for, for workshops more. Um, we're doing a big one here in Newfoundland uh, next summer in Grossmorn, uh, and it's all along sort of like uh, UNESCO World Heritage Site, and it's uh, an old Viking coast where the Vikings first landed on the continent and stuff like that. So yeah. got some really cool ideas for that. That's awesome. That's and then, awesome. And then hopefully back down to Antarctica when the season opens up again. I love it. I love it, man. You are you are the consummate adventurer. I love that. That is really really cool. So, uh, if people want to check out your work, what's a what's a URL that they can go to to see some of these photos from Antarctica and and other places? Curtis, yeah, uh, CurtisJonesPhoto dot com. That's uh, easy. Is the easiest one. Yeah, uh, and then I'm on Instagram, uh, C Jones Photo. Uh, that's yeah. Those Very are probably cool. the two easiest ways. All right. Cool, man. All right, Curtis Jones, I'll let you get on with it uh, to Greenland. You know, I'm, I'm jealous again. Every time we talk, I'm jealous at the end of the interview. That's not cool. <laughs> so, yeah, you're going to have to you're going to have to come along then. We're just going to have to, like, get on top of this. Six months I, out. I totally want to go. You know, I'm no stranger to this. I spent some time in the military so I can. Yeah, I hear it. I know. I know. Yeah. Yeah. That's so why I, I, I may appear I nerdy, I but. Happen. I, I may appear nerdy, but I I can be rustic when necessary. So that's that's every superhero's uh, get up though. Yeah. Appear nerdy. <laughs> Clark Kent, love it. Yeah, go cool, man. All right, on with your day, man. Thanks a lot. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. All right, Curtis Jones, okay. take care, man. This is Twitter.